Welcome to my life, welcome to my life, yeah On the bright side Yeah, this music here became my only lifeline Think I'm going crazy, I'm not in my right mind On the bright side Yeah, yeah, ayy Yeah, one leg out that brand new Benz way Hometown asking me my wrist, yeah Repetition from my chest, that's a bench press Seeing more behind the frame, future bright, but feel the shade Thinking ain't nobody feel the way I do But someone gotta oh, feel the same oh, yeah. On the bright side Yeah, this music here became my only lifeline Think I'm going crazy, I'm not in my right mind Yeah, welcome to my life, welcome to my life, yeah Welcome to my life, welcome to my life, yeah Welcome to my life, welcome to my... Hey guys, uh, obviously this is not going to be a normal, typical Murph Squad vlog. I've um, been kind of dreading doing this, but as you've seen by the, the thumbnail and the title, uh, our beloved dog Cam uh, passed away two days ago. And uh, I wanted to do this while it was fresh, but but obviously uh, it's, it's tough talking about it. I'm probably going to get emotional at some point. Um, on this vlog but <clears throat> for those that are new to the channel first of all we appreciate you tuning into the Murph squad and hope you're finding some value some inspiration from our family um, or maybe you're watching this because you too have lost a pet or a dog and are kind of grieving so this vlog is really a two-parter um, one it's a tribute to our dog cam and just <clears throat> the great the great memories and the blessings that he's been to our family over the last seven and a half years, as well as, you know, how do you grieve um, a pet that you really love, whether it be a dog, a cat, or whatever that, that you lost, and just kind of share some things that, that I do. I've grieved through several dogs and even my dad passing away. So how do you kind of grieve? Um, and if you're not a dog lover or a big pet, you may be thinking, gosh, it's just a pet, get over it. But for those that are dog lovers or again pet lovers you know that certain pets can really be a part of your family and it hurts when you when you lose them so anyways a little story time about cam I, I don't think i've shared it with anybody on the vlog it just not intentionally but just had it on guess but back in july it is currently it's almost march actually of 2024 back in july the family got back from vacation i stayed down in florida and was hanging out with my buddy mac and we were working on a little project together so i stayed down there another week well lois ann called me one day said i think something's wrong with cam i think he got bit by a snake and i'm like why do you think he got bit by a snake and she said well he was just kind of running around in the driveway where all of us were outside and he just collapsed and then he, he was struggling to get up and, he, and then he finally got up and she's like i think maybe he's got poison in him or something and she looked and he had some blood like on his cheek or, or his neck or somewhere. And she's like, I don't know if he would, got in the woods or went down the creek or something and, and messed with a snake and got bit. So we just kind of researched, you know, snake bites and, you know, some were like, oh, panic, go to the vet. Some were just like, well, just kind of keep an eye on them. So anyways, we just kind of waited a little bit and then another day or two goes by and he does the same thing, just kind of collapses, kind of freaking out, panicking and can't really get up Then finally gets up and seems to be fine. So after the second time we took him to the vet and Lois Ann shared you know what she thought well they were like no that's not what happens with a snake bite he doesn't have that and they started running tests on his heart and he has heart issues he actually has heart disease this is just kind of common this is what happens when dogs have heart disease or heart issues they pass out because they're not getting the proper blood flow and so that's the way dogs look when they pass out like i it doesn't look like what a human does when they pass out but apparently that's what dogs look like so anyways when i got back from vacation he he did this a few more times and it was kind of scary watching him it just collapses you know just could be running and all of a sudden just falls over and then and then he freaks out because he he can't get up it's like he can't use his front legs and then he finally gets up and you know he's kind of a little antsy but you could tell his heart wasn't beating right so anyways we wound up taking him to a cardiologist to have like an EKG done to really analyze his heart and it's really heartbreaking when they came back and uh uh this particular cardiologist said oh my gosh like I've never seen a heart this bad in all the years that I've been doing this and he was an older an older guy and he says I've never seen a dog's heart this bad he says I cannot believe your dog is as happy as he is and and can do and function like he is right now his heart is just barely beating and he's just barely getting 
blood flow like I and he he was really just blown away because he said really your dog should probably just be laying there and have no energy and just be miserable but he, he just could not believe how well Cam was behaving and acting and just happy and just you know full of energy with his heart beating just barely beating and he says it's it's really bad it's very very severe and I hate to tell you but this is you know basically this is a death sentence like there's nothing really you can do we can give him some heart medicine and kind of help him, you know, help his heart beat better and, and maybe prolong it a little bit. But you probably have, you know, it could be any day to, to probably at max a year. And uh, of course that was devastating news <clears throat> um, to know. And even the cardiologist was in tears. <clears throat> and he, uh, he had never even met Cam, but just, <clears throat> until that day until he just saw how happy and loving the dog was and it <clears throat> it broke his heart and so at the time Cam was about seven years old and he said you know unfortunately boxers they just they're not the healthiest of dogs and, and really their lifespan I think I think the average is maybe like nine years or something like that with with boxers and um, this is our second boxer I say our Lois Ann and I Micah Jay was a baby and then Colin was was a baby and kind of born through that as well but we had a dog a boxer dog named Chloe that unfortunately got hit by a car and it was very severe and we had to put her down and that that was a destroying uh, time and that's a whole separate thing but um, yeah that was very devastating um, when we had to go through that so anyways Cam is really the only dog that the boys really know. Now, Mike, I think, maybe remembers Cam or remembers Chloe a little bit, but really, seven and a half years we've had Cam, so he's really the dog that the boys know. So, anyways, you know, sharing that news, we all kind of, you know, obviously we're sad and kind of mourning that, but the heart medicine seemed to be doing, you know, pretty good. And we just tried to calm him down a little bit because he loves to see visitors. He jumps all over the place. He's like a bucking bronco for those that know him. He, he just jumps and he bucks and he just loves people and he's just always high energy so try to calm him down because when he got too excited he would he would pass out medicine helped but you know anyways long story short probably the last six weeks or so he's just kind of gone downhill a little bit we've had to get on new medicine he's been coughing which sounds like he's gagging um, and we actually just thought he was gagging at first and then it turns out it was a cough and we thought maybe he has a kennel cough but that really wasn't the case. It was just his heart failing, unfortunately, and he would just gag. Fluid was building up, and he was just struggling. And honestly, it was breaking my heart seeing him kind of going downhill like that. But we got him on some more medicine, some medicine that kind of helped dry up the fluid around his heart. You know, he was breathing heavier. Probably a week and a half ago, he was really struggling. I felt really bad. You know, I was pretty emotional that day because I thought that was that was going to be the day he would pass away. He, he was just real heavy breathing. He just could never get comfortable, just coughing, just didn't have the energy. You know, seeing him like that was heartbreaking, and, and I actually just prayed to God <laughs> and said, uh, look, God, I thank you for Cam. I thank you for, for the life that he's had, but I don't want to see my dog suffer. I don't, I don't want him to be miserable. Um, so if, if it's his time, just take him peacefully. And that was kind of my prayer, that he would just go peacefully. I was praying that we wouldn't have to put him down. I was praying that he wouldn't, you know, have a miserable life and suffer. But um, he, it was kind of weird. Like, he, he was so much better the next day. And, um, again, we got him on some medicine, and, and he was breathing better. He, was, he had kind of lost a little bit of his appetite, but he got his appetite back, and so he was eating good. He was, you know, it seemed like he was improving a ton. Really wasn't coughing, and we were like, wow, man, he's kind of he's kind of bounced back, and he's doing good, but it was still one of those things, like every morning when I'd wake up, uh, I just would look for Cam, you know, and <clears throat> would kiss him and love on him when I saw him, because I was like, thank you. You know, I have one more day with my dog, and uh, <clears throat> It taught me gratitude, you know, to be grateful and to be thankful for every day that <clears throat> that we got to spend with him. So, fast forward to uh, to Monday morning. Um, I got up early, you know, I usually get up early and, and cold plunge and, and go work out. So it's like 5 a.m. Sometimes he gets up, sometimes he doesn't. Um, and woke up at 5 a.m. and hear the little pitter-patter feet. You know, he came to check on me and he seemed like he was in a good mood, you know. I gave him his little kisses and he's wagging his little nub and he was happy to see me. 
Um, but I try not to do too much at 5 a.m. because the rest of the family's sleeping. So, you know, he just, just kind of greeting him or whatever. Did my stuff, came back, um, and every morning he loves to sit by Lois Ann's feet as she's fixing the boys. You know, usually she'll fix him some, some peanut butter and jelly or something for school. And he loves to sit there and he likes to get some of the bread, some of the crust, or just, you know, get some peanut butter or something. So he was sitting at her feet, you know, having a good morning. Boys go off to school. I was about to leave and Lois Ann was getting ready. She was going to be leaving. I was probably about five minutes away from leaving. Lois Ann was probably maybe 10 minutes away from leaving. And he would come in the office, check on me. I was doing some emails. He'd come in and check on me and then leave. And just, you know, being, being normal cam, acting normal. I hear him go in and he... He likes to drink out of the toilets. Like, you can give him a water bowl and he's going to go for the toilets. We always make sure, or we try to make sure the toilets were always clean. Um, so anyways, I could hear him in there drinking, drinking some water in our hallway bathroom. And then I heard a thud. And, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, you know, what is he into? But here lately, when you hear the thud, we're like, oh gosh, is Cam, has he passed out? And so Lois Ann came running out of the bathroom and she looked down the hall and she saw him laying laying down and you know usually he bounces up pretty quick at least halfway up and she looked at me and she goes Mike it's bad and uh so I jumped up you know I ran ran down the hallway and he was laying in the hall and he was kind of up on his front two legs not fully but just kind of almost like on his elbows and you could tell he was struggling he was trying to get up he was kind of like kind of freaking out a little bit you know and uh I just ran over and I grabbed him and he had peed this time which that wasn't normal he would just usually fall but when the bowels release, that's usually obviously not a good thing. Um, and his heart, you could just see his breathing was slow, was getting slower and slower. And Lois Ann said, Mike, I think this is it. I think he's, he's dying. <clears throat> and I just grabbed him. And I was... And I was just holding his head <clears throat> and I was just kissing on him and loving on him. <clears throat> and telling him how much I loved him. I said, Kim, we love you. We thank you for being such a great dog, but we don't want to see you suffer. It's okay. It's okay. And he immediately kind of started calming down. He didn't freak out. He just kind of relax when I was holding his head and I was just hugging him and Lois Ann was holding him and petting on him and we were just talking to him and I just said Cam it's okay you can you can let go you can go we don't you know we don't want you to suffer and we obviously don't want his his life to be miserable and we were just saying it's okay it's okay we love you um you can go and his breath would get slower and his heart got slower and slower and then he just he stopped breathing he just died right there in my arms <clears throat> and uh, obviously you know very emotional <clears throat> and it hurts you know to, to lose to lose your pet um, and the boys were in school so we didn't want to you know kind of disrupt their day. Colin had a baseball game out of town, so we just thought, you know what, we'll just wait to this evening um, and tell them. And so it, it worked out that we were able to just kind of hold off and tell them, and we just kind of wrapped up Cam and uh, just kind of put him in the garage for the time being um, till we could get home. And when all the boys were home Monday night, we we shared the news with them, and of course they were heartbroken, but I guess here's the, the bittersweet news. Because we knew back in the end of July, the beginning of August, that he had heart disease, we knew our time was limited, and we'd already kind of started coming to grips with the fact that he was gonna pass away, that he wasn't gonna live forever. And uh, so we were all grateful every day, and, and it caused us to love on him more. I mean, we loved on him, and we appreciated him more daily. Because, look, it's easy to take loved ones for granted or friends for granted or pets for granted or whatever, right? Just that's the kind of life. And so it helped us dial back in and not take him for granted and really appreciate him and really love on him these last six, seven months. And so I'm, I'm actually very grateful that we had the heads up. We didn't have a heads up with Chloe. Chloe got hit by a car and we had to put her down that night. So, you know, this was, this was a heads up and uh, it helped us to kind of, to come to grips with it. 
uh, nonetheless, it still hurts. Um, so we shared the news with the boys, and you know, Lois and I thought about going ahead and just you know burying Cam. I mean, my my ultimate goal, I would have loved to take him to the farm, but um, that's a couple hours away and just you know not realistic. So, anyways, I kind of thought the boys would want to participate in that. You know, it's just kind of like a final burial, funeral, saying goodbye. I wasn't gonna force them to do it, but just you know at least give them the option. So that's what we did, and, and the boys wanted to help, and they did want to say goodbye. So we were able to kind of say goodbyes to Cam Monday night. I was able to to secure the body really well, and. Um, you know, bury him, say our goodbyes, and, and uh, you know, just have a few moments with him. favorite toys, the moose and the skunk. Thank you, Cam, for seven and a half years. You're an amazing dog. Thank you for loving the boys, loving us unconditionally, no matter what. You were always so excited to see us, always happy to be around us, didn't ever want to be apart from us always ready to guard us and protect us and to jump on us and lick us <laughs> we love you cam may you now rest in peace thank you god for blessing us with cam thank you you know we've had a lot of great memories with cam you know he's been an amazing dog he's loved the boys and us he has protected us, he has watched out for us, he has given us a lot of laughs, a lot of enjoyment. It just really never mattered how bad of a day you were having because when you saw Cam, you were gonna smile. You know, he was gonna jump, he was gonna be just really kind of smiling at you and just happy to see you. The dog loved us unconditionally, you know, and that's something that I think we all need to do better, right? Just loving unconditionally and just being happy and excited and, and he loved life and, and he loved us and and we're forever grateful for him.
it's tragic when you lose a pet that you love. So for those that are dealing with a tragedy of, of you lost your dog, you lost your pet, you know, so how do you cope with that? Well, for me, the best thing has been to have that attitude of gratitude. Just be grateful. Be thankful for the opportunity that you had with that pet. Like, you know, what if you only had a day with the pet? What if you only had a month or a week or a year or, or I don't know how long you've had your pet, but be grateful for the amount of time that you had. Like for Cam, yes, yeah, seven and a half years, that's, that's a long time, really. I mean, it's not as long as some people may have their dogs 10, 20 years. But you know what? We only had Chloe like a few years. So it was double what we had Chloe. So I'm grateful that we had that amount of time. And it was a quality time. Cam had such a great quality of life, e even up until his last days. Yeah, there were some days that were bad, but for the most part, he had good days and he was still enjoying life. And so I'm grateful for that. You know, again, like I said, I'm grateful that we didn't have to put him to sleep. I'm grateful that we had the heads up that he had heart disease that we could actually appreciate him and not take him for granted and to love on him and man it really helped us to start kind of coping with it and dealing with it and, and again not taking him for granted because it's easy to do that and just to really love him and appreciate him again like I said I would wake up every morning and I wanted to go find Cam like did he make it through the night because I really kind of thought he would probably die during the night but I wanted to find him and when I saw him I'm like yes I'm blessed with a little more time with Cam you know, I have one more day and just would kiss him and love on him and that little nub would just be wagging and uh, it would just make my day, you know, it just made me more appreciative of him. And I'm just grateful for all the memories and all the great times that we had. I mean, he was such an amazing dog, not the smartest of dogs, uh, but he was really an amazing dog. He was a great dog for our family. And another thing that we do is we sit around and we talk and we share stories. We share pictures and videos. You know, that's something that we've been doing. Last night we did it for a while, just laughing at, you know, some of the memories and the stories, the good times that we had while we had him. Yes, it hurts and it still sucks and pulling into the driveway and not seeing his little face looking out the window or him not halfway down the driveway ready to meet me or opening the door and he's not there jumping all over me. Yeah, I went and got some groceries this morning and coming in and him not sticking his little nose in the grocery bag and follow me back and forth and just kind of wanting to see like yeah all those times are tough because it's now a new way of life right life is going to be different we used to always have to put food like either up way out of his reach or like even on counters he would get food so we'd had to stick food somewhere else the dog would eat he's eat more than any other dog we've ever had like the dog loves food put him on a diet like because he eats all the time but he would get food so it's kind of interesting now you can actually leave your food and not have to worry about it being gone in a matter of seconds so um, just those little things like that's been our way of life the last seven and a half years so now we're having to get used to a new way of life it, it just takes time Time does heal wounds. Now, it doesn't heal them fully, but I promise you, if you're going through a difficult time, maybe you just lost your pet and you're watching this, give it time. Time will help. Right now, it's still fresh on us, so it still hurts, still painful. Eventually, time will help heal that. Again, be grateful, grateful for the time that you had. I think about the same with my dad. My dad didn't get to live to see my third son, Gavin, or get to see a lot of my life now, and, and that stinks, and that upsets me, but I'm just thankful for the time that I did have with him. I have to change perspective, so it's the same thing with the pet. Change the perspective. Don't wish I had X amount more years. Be grateful for the years or the time that you did have, and at least you have those memories. At least you have that. That's something to be grateful for. So that's my advice to you if you're dealing with a pet. I'm sorry that you've lost a pet, a loved one, whatever you're doing watching this, but we appreciate all the love and support for the Murph Squad. I hope our videos inspire you, help you, encourage you, maybe just make you laugh. I know today's not one of those videos. Maybe you shed some tears today with us. <clears throat> But we appreciate the love, guys. We do this because we we chose to share our life with you, and that means the ups and the downs. You know, we never want to be a fake family. We don't share everything about our life. You know, obviously, there's a lot of private things that happen. The majority of our life is not shared on video, but we do try to share a lot of our life because we do want to experience life with you, and we hope our life is an inspiration and a help to you. You learn from our mistakes. You learn from our wins. Cam's been a big part of our vlogs from day one, and so we just wanted to share this update with you. And that's where Cam is buried. He's right here in our yard, right here where we can see and be reminded of him and the great memories that we had with him. So guys, I am gonna do a part two of this video. I uh, don't want it to go too long. And part two is just gonna be a bunch of clips of Cam. Some lost footage, if you will. Footage that's never made it in any of the vlogs. Some great memories that we had with him, kind of a best of, I guess, Cam moments. And some footage that we had even before we started vlogging. So be sure to watch it. I promise you it's gonna make you laugh. It'll make you smile. 
Guys, we, again, we appreciate the love. We appreciate the support. Hope you have a blessed day, and we'll see you in that part two. Bye-bye.